Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Katie Stahl. I work in Alex Wagner's lab at Nationwide Children's Hospital. I am a bioinformatics software developer. And today, I will be presenting on our work developing the Fusion Curation Interface, which is an educational tool to explore a unified framework for representing and curating gene fusions. That's a really fancy way of saying that we built a tool uh, for you to learn about this cool thing called the Gene Fusion Specification, which you might have heard about in Alex Wagner's talk last year at this conference. Before I proceed, I would like to extend a massive thank you to CGC for presenting me with a Technologist Award and making it possible for me to be here, excuse me, to present to you today. Um, and I would appreciate if you give me some grace. I'm equal parts excited and nervous to talk to you about this work today. So let's dive right into gene fusions. We're all at a cancer genomics conference, so we all know how, gene fu how important gene fusions are, hopefully. We know that they're vital in understanding and researching diseases and cancers. And they're also used to drive diagnosis and treatment of patients. And because they're so important, there are several existing standards for representing them. This can lead to problems when we try to communicate with each other about these gene fusions because there are inconsistent practices representing and annotating them. So gene fusion representation can be pretty complex. As we can see illustrated in this diagram towards the top, we can describe gene fusions as granularly as specifying DNA break coordinates. And if you look towards the bottom of this chart, you can see that we describe gene fusions as broadly as specifying the gene families. And additionally, there are so many nuances in between these for representing gene fusions. So now that we know how important gene fusions are in research, treatment and diagnosis, and how complex representing them can be, how can we make this information more easily shared so then we can make more headway in gene fusions research? This is where the gene fusion specification comes in. It's an open specification developed by experts from VIC, CGC, ClinGen, and the CAP ACMG Cytogenomics Committee. This specification is a framework for standardizing and representing gene fusion data. It incorporates and extends and refines several other recommendations for representing gene fusions, such as recommendations from HGNC, HGBS, ISCN, and regulatory elements of fusions. You might recall yesterday, hopefully you tuned in to Dr. Hastings' talk. Um, she presented you know, some new guidelines from ISCN, so we, we build on top of that. And she also explained how important global nomenclature can be, and this, of course, applies to gene fusions as well. So before we proceed, we need to define exactly what a gene fusion is, because apparently there can be some discrepancies with this definition. So to, to be ultimately clear, according to this specification, a gene fusion is the joining of two or more genes resulting in a chimeric transcript, or a novel interaction between a rearranged regulatory element with the expressed product of a partner gene. This is referred to a reg as a regulatory fusion. Now, a gene fusion is not genom genomic rearrangements within the same gene, and additionally, transcript alterations due to splice site variants, for example, novel adjoining transcript segments are not considered gene fusions because they do not involve multiple genes. So this chart may be remedial for some of you or most of you, but it's a good rep visual representation of a chimeric transcript just to eliminate any sort of uh, ideas that you might have that may be incorrect. Again, this is according to the specification. So towards the top, we can see breakpoints in this arbitrary blue gene and red gene that are getting split and then rearranged. And then after transcription, you can see on the bottom of this chart, we end with this chimeric transcript. This class of fusions is exemplified by well-known clinically relevant gene fusions such as BCR able one And this, again, might be remedial, but here's a visual representation of what we mean by regulatory fusion. There are two examples here. On the top, we see a promoter swap where the promoter from this arbitrary blue gene is now affecting this red gene. And in the middle, we can see an example where the enhancer for the arbitrary blue gene is affecting the red gene. So in both of these examples, this results in modulated expressions of the gene product expression of the partner gene, in this case, the red gene. On the bottom right corner, you can see some examples of regulatory fusion nomenclature as according to the specification. 
So next, we need to discuss gene fusion contexts, which are necessary for determining the elements involved in a fusion. The specification defines two types, and these are assayed, which come from biological specimens, and categorical, which are general classes of fusions grouped by their shared attributes. And you'll often see these in genomic knowledge bases and literature. So now that we've covered the necessary background information for building gene fusions as according to the specification, we'll switch gears into this cool tool that we built called the Gene Fusion Curation Tool or Gene Fusion Builder. This is a web application that allows you to learn more about the specification by constructing genes using a drag and drop interface. We support building both assayed and categorical fusions and additionally regulatory fusions. The application also offers various helpful utilities, such as retrieving main transcripts, coordinate conversion, and sequence ID lookup. So here's what the home page of the tool looks like. There are capabilities that I de detailed in the previous slide, as you can see at the top of the menu on the left, in addition to helpful resources to learn more or to get involved, as you can see on the bottom of that menu. The homepage has more information about the web app itself and assayed and categorical fusions and additionally the utilities that it offers. So how can we use it? I'll show you. So let's, let's take an assayed fusion example first. So let's say we have a patient diagnosed with a neoplasm and maybe we suspect Ewing sarcoma. So then an EWSR1 break apart fish assay is performed. And let's say that this is our result here. So notice these split signals. For those of you who are unfamiliar with, uh, with fish, these indicate um, some, potential uh, some potential event has occurred. These, the um, red and, sorry, excuse me, the red and green represent the three prime and five prime probes, so we know that they have split. So this typically is indicating that something is going on here. So in this case, we will, in infer an EWSR1 fusion has occurred. So the nomenclature for this is shown here, and you can see as according to the specification, since we infer that, that this fusion has occurred, we haven't actually confirmed it yet, uh, we can see that this is represented by parentheses around the double colon, and this idea of an unknown gene partner is represented by a question mark. So now let's build it in our tool. So as you can see, we have this drag and drop interface over here and we can drag over the gene, type in EWSR1 since that is our gene, and then next we will drag over the unknown gene element. This is the part where you guys are all supposed to ooh and ah, look at how awesome this is. <laughs> and then next, um, I, will, I do wanna point out that the, the workflow for creating assayed gene fusions in this tool is a little bit different from creating categorical fusions, and this is due to the different minimum information model that is required, and you can read more about the specification. I'll have links to that at the end of my slides. So in this case, since this is an assayed fusion, our next step is to select the causative event, so we will select a rearrangement. And then on the next step, we will enter the assayed metadata. This is also required for an assayed fusion, and then on this last step here, we can see the cool summary that is created for our fusion. So you can see at the top is the nomenclature that is developed. This is according to the specification. And the, you can also see the, any regulatory elements that you added and other information that you added. Additionally, there is a JSON representation of this summary in the tab at the top. So next, let's do a categorical fusion example. Uh, we can see here, I just loaded up Civic, and I'm curious about ALK fusions. So I can see with ALK fusions, there are a ton of different variants and potential partners here. So we consider this an example of a categorical fusion grouped by its shared attributes, which is, in this case, many possible five prime partners and a retained kinase domain. And the nomenclature for this fusion is shown here, this idea of multiple possible gene partners is represented by a V. And on the right here, this is an homage to Vine. I'm not sure if anyone is familiar. That's maybe a my generation thing. <laughs> um, so we have a lot of ALK variants here. So this is analogous to uh, B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia with 
this MLL rearrangement. This is one of the, excuse me, um, one of the documented cases of where this V is used to describe many possible fusion partners. So now let's build this in the categorical fusion tool. Yay, more ooing and aahing, so cool. So we drag over our multiple possible gene partners here and then enter in ALK. Um, and I forgot to mention it earlier, but you can also see briefly at the top, as you construct the gene fusion, the nomenclature is displayed in real time. So next, this is again specific to categorical fusions. We will enter domain information, so we will select that we want to apply the protein kinase, protein kinase domain for ALK and that this and select our status for it. Next, we will select if the reading frame is to be ex expected to be preserved and we'll just leave it unspecified here. And again, you can see this, this summary for your constructed fusion with the nomenclature and all of the information that you developed or put in. So if you're not sure where to start, we have plenty of demo capabilities. Our goal with this is to make it very educational. So pretty much everywhere you look, our goal is to have a demo available so you can just play around with it and learn about the specification. Uh, I would like to, like to acknowledge my fellow lab members and Alex Wagner and also all of my lab members who have helped me practice and given me advice. I really appreciate all of you. I would also like to thank Vic and the funding, funding from NIH and if you have any questions, please feel free to come up to me. I promise I don't bite. Uh, you can contact me. My email is shown here. Additionally, this QR code or this link displayed on the bottom of the screen will have resources for you to read more about the gene fusion specification, access this cool tool. Please access it. Um, tell us how we can improve it and make it more fun for you. And um, so, yeah, thank you so much for listening. This is... Uh, you know, we're early in the morning, but hopefully we're a little bit more awake than my sweet little cat in this picture where I was working on my talk. Uh, thank you guys so much.